Brethren, good evening, good evening. Tonight, as we gather once again on this seventh day of the second month of 2024, let's just thank him. Lord, we just want to thank you. The Bible says in Psalm 107 verse 1, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endureth forever. Our God is a loving father. He's a good God. No matter what we go through, it doesn't diminish his goodness. The Bible says in Psalm 107 verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are the redeemed supposed to say? They are supposed to give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endureth forever. It says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he has redeemed from the hand of the adversary. Let's thank the Lord tonight on this seventh day of the month of February 2024. Lord, we want to say thank you for you are good. Your compassion, your loving kindness, your love, it endures forever. We, the redeemed, have gathered to say thank you. You've redeemed us from the hand of the adversary. You've not allowed the Hashatan to have his way over us. You've not allowed the enemy of our soul to destroy us. You've not allowed the enemy to prevail over us. And so we, the redeemed, we come and we say thank you. He says in Psalm 107, 3, he has gathered us from the lands, from the east, from the west, from the north and from the south. Here we are representing different nations. We want to thank you, Lord. We want to say thank you. You yourself have gathered us tonight. We are here because you brought us here and we are grateful. We want to give you thanks, Lord. We want to appreciate your goodness. We want to appreciate your loving kindness. We want to appreciate everything you have done for us. We are recipients of your mercy. The ones you love, Father, have gathered to honor you. The ones you have made a way for where there seem to be no way. We have gathered to appreciate you and to say thank you. The Bible says in Psalm 100, we should make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It says we should serve you with gladness, that we should come before your presence with singing, that we should know, Lord, that you are our God. It is you who has made us. We have not made ourselves. We are your people. We are the sheep of your pasture. You are the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. It is you who has shepherded us from the rising of the sun, even to the setting of the same. You, great shepherd, have led us. You've not allowed car accidents to destroy us. You've not allowed calamities to destroy us. You have preserved and kept us by your special grace. So we enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We are thankful to you, Father, and we bless your name for you are good. And your mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Your truth is to all generations. When we were singing the song before, the songwriter said, Lord, even if time were to stand still, if time were to stall, you know, I wouldn't even have enough words to describe how good you are. Even if time were to stall, I would run out of words to say thank you. And he says, you know what? We ain't seen nothing yet. We ain't even seen the full extent of God's glory. We've only seen the fringes of his goodness. We are only at the place of the fringes. We have not seen the full story. And so, Lord, we just want to thank you tonight. We just want to thank you because, Lord, we can look at our lives and see that greater things you, you have done, Lord, and greater things you are still set to do. And so we say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We worship you and we exalt your name. Oh, be exalted, be magnified, be exalted in this place. Be exalted, be exalted. Be exalted, Abba Father. Marianne de Bossi and Rabossi. Be exalted, be lifted on high. Laba suka laba sekele bossi. Mazokoria mashana mahanda. Brethren, just lift your voice and exalt his name. Praise him. He is exalted above every other name. There is no God that can be compared to him. You are the great God who is called El Elyon, the possessor of the heavens and the earth. We worship you, Elohim, our creator. Indeed, it is in you that we live and move and have our being. There is nothing we have, Father God, that is good, that has not come from you. And so we say thank you, Abba Father, to you be all the glory, to you be the adoration in Jesus name. Amen. 
Brethren, as we come to this last day of this prayer season, um, on this seventh night, we just want to come once again by the blood of Jesus. Let's begin to plead the blood upon our spirit, our soul, our bodies. Let's plead the blood of Jesus upon our families, upon our communities, our environments. Let the airways around us be sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Is there anything that may have defiled us throughout this day? Is there any way the enemy has defiled our spirit? We are coming by the blood of Jesus. We receive cleansing. We receive cleansing this hour. May we be cleansed from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. May we be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. May the blood wash us. May the blood purify us. May the blood renew a right spirit in us. Yes, we receive cleansing tonight, Father. As we come to the throne of grace and mercy, we receive mercy that we need right now, Lord, for every failure, for every sin, for every transgression, for every pattern of iniquity. We receive mercy. Let mercy triumph over judgment in our lives. We receive the full extent of what Jesus died to give us. We receive the full extent of the deliverance that came through the cross of Calvary for us ourselves, for our family members, spouse, children, children's children, parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters in Christ. Mighty God, we receive. We receive tonight your mercy, Lord. Sanctify us, O God, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Still praying about our sanctification. The Bible says that in Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, it gives us the example of how Christ loved the church. Ephesians 5 from verse 25. It says Christ also loved the church and gave himself for the church that he might sanctify the church and cleanse the church with the washing of water by the word of God. Let's receive tonight. We are the church. We have gathered here as the church, as the body of Christ. And the Bible says Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for the church so that he might sanctify the church and cleanse us, wash us with the washing of the water by his word. Let the word of God wash us tonight. We receive a spiritual bath through the word of God. Let the word of God sanctify us, cleanse us, all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. We want to perfect holiness in the fear of the Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, you died to sanctify us. You died to sanctify us. The Bible says in verse 27 of Ephesians 5, so that you might present the church to yourself in glorious splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that the church should be holy and set apart for God and blameless. Lord, tonight, as we gather in this place to pray, we pray in the name of Jesus that we as the body of Christ who are gathered here, that we be cleansed, oh God, that there'll be no spot, there'll be no wrinkle in the realm of the spirit the enemy will have no legal ground to land on anybody here he will have no legal ground uh, to function through any of our homes uh, or our family members uh, we are pleading the blood uh, let the blood speak oh god uh, sanctify us lord uh, wash us by your word uh, may we be washed uh, by the washing of the word uh, may we be cleansed tonight uh, in the mighty name of the lord jesus in jesus name we pray amen and then when we go to Romans, Romans, I want to read Romans chapter five, Romans chapter five. In fact, when you read the preceding chapter, Romans four, the last verse, it says Jesus was betrayed. I'm reading amplified. Jesus was betrayed and crucified because of our sins and was raised from the dead because of our justification our acquittal and absolving us of all sin before God. Therefore, since we have been justified, that is acquitted of sin. Now, this is now chapter five. See, chapter four and five are so connected. Jesus was betrayed and crucified because of our sins. Therefore, since we have been justified, that is acquitted of sin, declared blameless before God by faith. Let us grasp the fact that we have peace with God and the joy of reconciliation with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed through Jesus. We also have access by faith into this remarkable state of grace in which we firmly and securely and safely stand. Let us rejoice in our hope and the confident assurance of experiencing and enjoying the glory of our great God, the manifestation of his excellence and power. Child of God, tonight, let's begin to thank him. 
and say, Lord, I thank you tonight that I've been justified because you were betrayed and crucified because of my sins. But you were raised to newness of life for my justification, for my acquittal. Thank you that I've been acquitted. I've been as absolved from all sin before God. Thank you, Lord, tonight uh, that I've been justified, uh, acquitted of sin, declared blameless before God by faith. Uh, Lord, I grasp the fact that I have peace with God tonight. I have the joy of reconciliation with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one through Jesus tonight, child of God, the Bible says through Jesus, we also have access by faith into this remarkable state of grace. So child of God, enter the realms of grace, enter the dimensions of grace, 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 undeserved mercy, undeserved kindness, the love of God, uh, undeserved you know, every good thing, uh, divine enablement, divine empowerment tonight through Jesus. Uh, I access by faith, uh, grace, uh, a state of living by grace. Uh, I live by grace. I pray by grace. I study the word of God by grace. Everything I'm going to do it by grace. I'm going to work by grace. Even in the secular jobs we have, we will work by grace. Even in our families, uh, we will be what we are by grace. Uh, are you a father in this place? Uh, enter the remarkable state of grace. You will parent with grace. Uh, are you a mother in this place? Uh, we will parent with grace. Uh, are you a daughter or a son? Uh, you will be what you are by grace. Uh, everything will be by grace. Uh, by the grace of God, we are what we are. In the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, Father, we stand firmly and securely in grace. We rejoice in our hope and in the confident assurance that tonight we are experiencing and enjoying the glory of our great God. We enjoy the manifestation of his excellence and of his power. We exalt, oh God, in this reality that our God has placed us on higher ground. He has acquitted us. He has justified us and he has called us by new names. To you, Lord, be the glory. To you be the adoration. We reverence you. We extol your name. How marvelous are your works, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let us go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. As we come to this seventh night of prayer, brethren, I want to encourage us that we are not going to give up on the goodness of God in the land of the living. No matter how the enemy comes against us like a flood, we are not giving up on the goodness of God in the land of the living. 2 Corinthians 1 from verse 8. The Bible says, I want to read it in the Passion Translation. It says, brothers and sisters, you need to know about the severe trials we experienced while we were in Western Turkey. All the hardships we passed through crushed us beyond our ability to endure. We were so completely overwhelmed that we were about to give up entirely. But look, child of God, they did not give up. It was hard. They said we were about to give up, but they didn't. It felt like we had a death sentence written upon our hearts. And we still feel it to this day. But it has taught us to lose all faith in ourselves and to place all of our trust in the God who raises the dead. He has rescued us from terrifying encounters with death. And now, we fasten our hopes on him to continue to deliver us from death yet again. Child of God, I want you to come to God and say, Lord, whatever comes my way, I refuse to trust in myself. But Lord, I put all my faith in you, almighty God, who is able to raise the dead, who calls the things that, don't, that be not as though they were. I put all my trust in you. Yes. I don't need to trust myself too much. But now, Lord, I put my trust in you. In every situation, in every challenge, in every trial, Lord, we put our trust in you. You have never failed us, oh God. The Bible says that you rescued Apostle Paul and all of them who were with him when they went through the trials they went through in Western Turkey. The same God who delivered them. You are the same God today. You are able to deliver us from every trial. You are able to deliver us from every pressure. Whatever has come our way, Lord, we will not give up. We will not surrender because you are a faithful God. You have delivered your children before and you will do it again. Our God, you are faithful. You have delivered and you will deliver again. You will do it again, Lord. We are expectant. 
we are expectant our God you are able in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus thank you father in Jesus name amen in Hebrews 10 Hebrews 10 the Bible says from verse 35 I'm going to read it in the amplified it says do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence for it has a glorious and a great reward for you have need of patience. You have need of patient endurance to bear up under difficult circumstances without compromising so that when you have carried out the will of God, you may receive and enjoy to the full what is promised. Child of God, God has a promise. He has promised us so many things in the Bible. And now the Bible is saying to us, do not fling away your fearless confidence. Do not cast away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward for your confidence in God uh, has a glorious and great reward. Uh, Lord, begin to speak to the Lord this hour and say, Lord, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, I stand in your truth. Uh, I stand upon your promises. Uh, we sang the song before standing in the promises of God, standing in his promises. Uh, we refuse to move uh, from the promises of God. Uh, whatever the Lord has promised us, uh, we are standing in the promise. Uh, we will not fling our way our our fearless confidence, no fear. We refuse to fear for it has a glorious and a great reward. Bible says we have need of patience. Lord, tonight by the power of the Holy Spirit, patience is one of your fruit, Holy Spirit. I am asking in the name of Jesus, let the fruit of patience come out of all of us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we surrender to you, Holy Spirit, in every dimension where we want to be tired, where we want to be impatient. Lord, we receive the fruit of patience. Holy Spirit, release the fruit in us in the name of Jesus we receive patient endurance in the name of Jesus whatever the circumstance we will not compromise we will not give up yes we will receive and enjoy fully what the Lord has promised to us our God is faithful our God is mighty our God is dependable in Jesus mighty name we pray amen Bible says, let's go back to 2 Corinthians 1, 2 Corinthians 1 verses 19 and 20. The Bible says, I'm reading the Passion Translation. It says, Jesus Christ is the son of God and is the one whom Timothy, Silas, Paul have preached to you. And he has never been both a yes and a no. Jesus has never been both a yes and a no. He has always been and always be for us a resounding yes. When we come to him with his promises that are in his word, he doesn't say yes and no, yes and no. He says yes. Bible says he has a resounding yes. For all of God's promises, they find their yes of fulfillment in Jesus. And as his yes and our amen ascend to God, we bring him the glory. Are you with me, child of God? When we pray, and we are standing on the word of God. The answer that Jesus gives is yes. And then when he says yes. And then we hear the yes in the realm of the spirit. And we say amen. When Jesus says yes. And we say amen. It ascends to God the father. And God the father releases the testimony. Because it brings God glory. It glorifies the father. And it glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ. So tonight child of God. I want you to come to the Lord. And say Lord Jesus. I thank you because Lord. All the promises of God. Have always been a resounding yes in you. So today Lord. I receive fulfillment. For every promise of God. That I've been been waiting upon God for I receive a yes and Lord Jesus I say amen to your yes you said yes to deliverance you say yes to deliverance yes to healing yes to divine provision you say yes to helping your children you have never left us nor forsaken us because you are the Lord who is our shepherd when we pray you say yes and so Lord we are saying amen to all your yeses for the last seven days people have gathered on this platform and they have been praying every day, Lord, uh, raising up different prayer requests. Uh, I want to thank you tonight uh, that you've said yes. Uh, and tonight we gather to say amen. 
Amen. To every prayer that has been prayed for the month of February, oh God. We say amen to your will in the month of February. We say amen to breakthroughs in the month of February. We say amen to deliverance, to transformation, to new beginnings. In this month of February, we are walking in the light. We are walking in his glory. We are walking in his goodness. Yes, Lord, you are saying yes. And we say amen. Amen. May you be glorified in us. May you be glorified in our lives. May you be glorified in the homes that are represented here. May you be glorified, Lord, we say amen. Amen to your will, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go to the book of Job. Job. Job chapter 26. Job chapter 26. Job chapter 26. I want to read for us from verse 5, from verse 5. The Bible says in Job 26 from verse 5, it says the spirits of the dead tremble underneath the waters and their inhabitants, they tremble. Sheol, the netherworld, the place of the dead is naked before God. And Abaddon, Abaddon is that pit, that abyss where the fallen angels congregate and where Satan and his unholy trinity congregate. He said in that place of destruction, they have no covering from the eyes of God. God can see them. Whatever evil plots they plot, whatever evil thing they design, God can see them. He says they tremble, they tremble underneath the waters. They tremble in the marine kingdom. They tremble. In Sheol, they are trembling. In Abaddon, they are trembling. I want us to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, let your power reach to every realm, Lord, wherever the enemy is planning rebellion against your will. Lord, may they be exposed and may their evil works be destroyed because you said nothing is hidden from your eyes. They have no covering there. Lord, their works are exposed. Whatever evil they are planning against any child of God in this month of February and for all our days on planet earth mighty god expose and destroy their evil works expose and destroy whatever lord the demonic spirits the fallen angels the powers of darkness are plotting and planning against any child of god in this month lord ah like whatever they are planning in this year lord whatever they are planning in the years to come in the name of jesus because it's exposed to you father god we ask oh god arise let your enemies be scattered Arise, O oh God. Let your enemies be scattered. None of them will remain. Oh God, arise. Oh God, arise. Child of God, begin to ask him. Oh God, arise. Arise, O oh God. Let them be scattered. Because what? Whatever they are doing uh, is exposed before God. Uh, is exposed. They cannot hide. Lema uh, Every evil, let it be scattered. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it be scattered. Oh God, arise. Let your enemies be scattered. According to Psalm 68, oh God, let your enemies scatter. Anyone who opposes the breakthroughs of your children is a rebellious enemy of God. Lord, scatter them. Anyone who, 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 who seeks to hinder that which you planned and purposed for the destinies of your children is your enemy, oh God. Oh God, arise. Let them be scattered. All those who hate God, let them begin to flee tonight. Let them run away in terror. Let them flee, Lord. Let them flee. They cannot continue. Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Oh God, arise in Jesus name we pray I want us to join that Psalm 68 1 with James 4 James 4 verse 7 the Bible says in James 4 7 so submit yourselves to the authority of God resist the devil stand firm against him and he will flee from you child of God what is the meaning of fleeing Psalm 68 said let those who hate God flee before him what is the meaning of fleeing fleeing doesn't mean that they walk away leisurely 
It doesn't mean that they walk away, you know, proudly strolling or strutting, you know, or doing the catwalk. Fleeing means they take to their heels and they run away in fear. They run away in fear. They tremble. They are not just going to leave you quietly. They are going to run and tremble. Let's begin to pray. Father God, every enemy of my soul, every enemy of your will for my life in this month and in this year, Lord, and in the years to come, oh God, arise. Let them be scattered. Let them flee before you, Lord. All those who hate what you have said about us, all those who hate us, your goodness in our lives. All those who hate what the Lord has been doing in our lives, let them flee tonight. They must run in terror. They must run in terror. Every demon that has tried to terrorize God's children, tonight they must run in terror. In Amasika Labasia, power has changed hands. Power has changed hands. Makura Let them flee. Let them flee. The Bible says they will come against us in one direction. They will flee in seven different ways. Let them be scattered, O oh God. Oh God, arise. Arise, oh God. Let them be scattered. Because what they are doing is not hidden from you, Father God. It is exposed. They are exposed. All their evil works are exposed. What they did in darkness, the light of God has exposed it and destroyed it in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Psalm 68 verse 2, the Bible says, As smoke is driven away, so God drive them away. As wax melts before fire, so let the wicked perish before the presence of God. In the name of Jesus, child of God, begin to pray. Let the smoke of the Holy Spirit begin to drive away every satanic agenda, every enemy of God's children. As the wax melts before fire, the wicked will perish at the presence of the Lord. Any agendas they've been following, any evil they've been doing, mighty God, the everlasting King of glory, release your spirit as a wind and drive them away. Drive them away. Let the wind of the Spirit drive them away. Drive them from our families, from our homes, uh, from our children, our children's children. Drive them away from our businesses, uh, from, oh God, the ministries you've given us. Uh, drive them away uh, from the professions you've given us. Uh, Lord, drive them away. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Bible says from verse 11 of Job 26, from verse 11, it says the pillars of the heavens they tremble and are terrified at the rebuke of God i want us to pray let god send a rebuke to all the principalities and the powers and the rulers of darkness any power any high ranking demon any power that is contending with what god is doing in our lives let god send them a rebuke because the bible says they tremble when the lord releases a rebuke yes just like when the archangel Michael was contending with uh, the enemy over the body of Moses. He said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. And that was enough. Lord, send them a rebuke. Rebuke them, O God. Rebuke, O God. Uh, every demonic assignment. Uh, rebuke them, Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, the pillars of the heavens tremble at the rebuke of the Lord. Uh, rebuke them, Lord, uh, in every dimension and in every realm. Uh, in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Verse 12 of Job 26, it says, God stirred up the sea by his power and by his understanding, he smashed proud Rahab. By his breath, the heavens are cleared. His hand has pierced the swiftly fleeing serpent. God stirred up the sea by his power. Whatever is coming from the sea, the marine kingdom, God is destroyed it. It says he has smashed proud Rahab. And then, this Rahab, sometimes you will see Bible scholars will call it Rahab or Rahab, but it's a spirit of wasting. He wants to waste people's efforts. He wants to waste away the prayer life of God's children. He wants your prayers to be wasted. But you know what? We're not going to agree. You know, just like the slogan of the Nigerians this year, they say this year we're not going to agree for anybody. We not go grieve for any demon, any devil. We are not going to agree. In other words, you are going to stand your ground and say no. Because the Bible is saying God has the power. 
by his power. He has smashed proud Rahab. Nothing will be wasted in your life. Begin to pray and say, Father, by your power, stir up even the sea. Whatever even is in the marine kingdom, Lord, stir it up and destroy it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, smash to pieces every power that is trying to waste our efforts. Smash to pieces every power that says, yes, they have prayed for seven days, but I want to waste their effort. Lord, smash them to pieces. Smash them to pieces. Whatever wants, oh God, our investment in the place of prayer to be wasted. We come against them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Smash them, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Job 26, verse 13. Bible says, by his breath, the heavens are cleared. God just needs to breathe. And then whatever was the roadblock in the realm of the spirit is moved. The heavens, which means the first heaven, the second heaven, wherever the satanic powers are, 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 are congregating and using as their headquarters in the heavens. The Bible says by his breath, the heavens are cleared. I want you to pray by the breath of God. Lord, let there be a clear road for me to fulfill divine destiny. Even in this season, what you have intended for me, may I fulfill it, O God, by your breath, mighty God. Clear the heavens, clear the path, O God. Whatever is trying to be a hindrance, let it be cleared in the name of the Lord Jesus. Clear, O God, satanic roadblocks. Clear, O God, every resisting factor, every resisting force, whatever is standing in the way. By your breath, Almighty God, you are able to clear the road. Clear the road because you cause, O God, a highway to appear even in the wilderness. You cause a highway to appear in the wilderness. Every satanically engineered wilderness, every satanically engineered wilderness that is trying to hinder our journey. Clear them tonight, oh God. Clear them, Lord. Let the road be clear. Ah, Ramasika Labosia. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, Rabosika Labosia. Maseke Labosia. Let the road be clear. I heard of a name once. I think if I'm not confused now, the name was Uzamaka. Like, let the road be clear. Let whatever the road is in front of us be clear in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father God, there is a journey you have, you, have, you have intended for your children. There is a path you have ordained for us in this season for such a time as this. And it's a good road. It's not a bad road. Now, wherever the enemy is trying to put potholes and evil hindrances on our roads, let the breath of God clear them in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy is engineering to hinder you, to slow you down. You know, sometimes it doesn't need to stop you um, entirely. Sometimes all he wants is to slow you down. He wants you to slow down so that you'll miss your Kairos moments and your Kairos season. But you're going to pray tonight. Uh, Father, whatever is hindering my way, uh, I receive speed. Uh, I receive divine speed. Uh, and the let the road be clear tonight uh, by the power in the name of Jesus. Uh, Shana Makara Masia, just like Elijah was able to gird up his loins uh, by the power of the Spirit of God uh, and to run faster than the chariots of Ahab. Uh, I receive speed. Uh, I receive an overtaking anointing uh, to run, oh God, uh, faster than what a human being can run. Uh, I receive overtaking anointing. Everything that has hindered me, everything that has frustrated me, I receive an overtaking anointing. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh God, help us. Move us forward, Lord. Supernaturally move us forward. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I was in a meeting today with our... Um, director of nursing and midwifery and some of the Royal College of Nursing people and some of the like professors around Greater Manchester and they told us this that they were in London the other day and they found this uh, young woman who is three years post qualification with her nursing qualification and when they got there they found that within that three years she's already a band seven and he's got a management senior responsibility, a, a position that takes other people 20 years to get to, 15 years to get to. This one got to within 18 months post-qualification, 18 months. She already got that role. And, you know, they began to give examples of other people. Then now, you know, God talks to us sometimes even in the secular realm. So they were complaining about this and saying, how did she get that job? How did she get it? How did she get it? But before I went to the meeting, I had another meeting earlier in the afternoon. 
And this uh, woman told me that she only qualified um, in 2019. And now she's here in Oldham managing the teams in the civic center. That the people she's managing have been there for years and years. People are shocked when she's in supervision with them. They're saying, you're only a baby. You've only been qualified five years. And now she's heading, you know, the service and is there in the civic center. Those are examples of an overtaking anointing. Child of God, you're going to pray. Whatever is on your path that is hindering progress, you must receive the overtaking anointing. Bible tells us Elijah ran faster than the chariots of Ahab. That's to say a human being in our time ran faster than a car. Child of God, re receive speed. Receive speed. Receive speed. Makura masekelebosia. Where Satan had put speed bumps along the way to slow you down. Let the breath of God melt away those speed bumps in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Let them be melted away. Receive speed. Let this month be a month of divine speed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let the breath of God blow away every hindrance. Let the heavens be cleared. Let your path be cleared. Let the road be cleared. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. And then the Bible says still in that Job 26 verse 13 it says the hand of God has pierced the swiftly fleeing serpent. In some translations, it will name that as Leviathan, the crooked serpent. This is that power that I'm always talking about that brings backlash to people. You will say, how is that relevant to me? It's relevant because that spirit, sometimes people have got their breakthrough. They got the answer. And then that spirit comes and backlashes them. And even destroys what little they had got and takes them back to square one. Then they have to start all over again. And it can backlash, take them back to square one. But the Bible says, even if that spirit is fleeing swiftly, God will pierce it in the name of Jesus. In other words, it's like God takes an arrow or a spear and he pins it down and he pins it down. Let's begin to ask him, Lord, Wherever in my life, Lord, I've been a, a victim of the swiftly fleeing serpent, of that spirit of backlash, where the enemy, the crooked serpent, has been working against me, Lord, uh, has been working against our deliverance and our our, our breakthroughs. Uh, tonight, uh, send your spear from heaven and pierce that swiftly fleeing serpent uh, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, pierce it, O oh God. It will not go free. It will not go free. Pierce it, mighty God. Pierce it, Lord. Pierce it. That fle fle swiftly fleeing serpent. Let it be pierced, O God. That gliding serpent that is moving swiftly. Lord, release your, your spear. Release your spear and pierce them in the name of the Lord Jesus. They will not escape. They will not escape. In Amasikandelebosia, they will not escape. Lika Sukalabasia, no matter how fast they are moving, we declare in the name of Jesus. Mashandelebo kurra ba 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 ba. Jandura ba kurra ba zeketelebo. Mazukerelebo kurra mazikalaba. They will not. They will not escape. Let that fleeing serpent be pierced by God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. And then the Bible says all this. All this that God is doing, you know, stirring up the sea by his power, smashing Rahab, piercing the swiftly fleeing serpent, exposing what is in Abaddon. It says all these things in Job 26, 14. Yet these are just the fringes of his ways. They are mere samples of his power. They are the faintest whisper of his voice. Who can contemplate the thunder of his full mighty power? He's saying even this power that you and I think is great is just the fringes, is the outer is the outer aspects of it. It's like, you know, when the priest would wear a garment and they had the fringes at the bottom of the garment, the fringes were not the full garment. They were just a small part of the garment. It's just, you know, the small part. It's the edges. You know, when you say fringes, like the edges, these are just the edges. We've not even seen the full manifestation. It's just the whisper of his voice. God has not started shouting. 
He says, who can contemplate the thunder of his full mighty power? I want you to ask him and say, Lord, I am thanking you for the fringes of your ways that have demonstrated power in my life. But I'm asking you, Lord, uh, that concerning all the powers of darkness, uh, that you would release uh, the fullness of your fury, Father God. Release the fullness uh, of your fury against them. Release the fullness of your judgment, oh God, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, so that uh, our deliverance will be permanent, so that our our breakthroughs will be permanent so that our testimonies will be permanent. Release the full effect, oh God, of your power in the mighty name of Jesus. Release the full extent, oh God. The full extent of your power. The full extent of your power. Release the fullness, O oh God, of your power. Destroy the works of the enemy. Destroy them completely, Lord. Let them be unable to rise up again. Let these testimonies we have got, let them be permanent. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We receive the fullness of your power, Lord. The fullness of your power. Lord, release the fullness of your power. The fullness, oh God, the fullness of your power. Ishana mahande lebo siya, masuke lebo kura baba baba baba, zaka telebo siya, makura baba baba baba, nakase ke telebo siya. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name, Amen. I want to go back to Psalm sixty-eight, and I want to go back to it in the Passion Translation. Psalm sixty-eight, and I want us to read from verse seventeen. Psalm sixty-eight from verse seventeen. The Passion Translation Bible says, "Look, look, child of God, wherever you are, behold, see it with the eye of the spirit. Look and behold, look at the mighty chariots of God, ten thousands upon ten thousands." More than anyone could ever number. No wonder Elisha prayed for his servant and said, Oh God, open his eyes. And when God opened his eyes, he looked around and he thought, Oh wow, the chariots of heaven, the armies of heaven, they were more than the Syrian Aramean armies that had come against them. Child of God, the Bible says, Look, look at the mighty chariots of God. Look at the ten thousands upon ten thousands, more than anyone could ever number. God is at the front, leading them all from Mount Sinai into his sanctuary with the radiance of holiness upon him. He ascends into the heavenly heights, taking his many captured ones with him, leading them in triumphal procession. We read this morning in Colossians 2 verses 14 and 15 that Jesus has publicly disgraced the principalities and the powers. This scripture is confirming it. God ascends. He is taking them in a triumphal procession. They've been arrested. What has been chasing us has been arrested. What has been fighting us has been arrested. They are being led in triumphal procession of defeat. And he says, God has given gifts unto men. He has given us gifts so that we may dwell with Yah, Yahweh, the self-existent God whom nobody created. I want you to thank the Lord tonight and say, Father God, I thank you for the innumerable company of angels. I thank you for the warring angels. I thank you for the chariots of the warring angels that Lord God Almighty, you have released all around us. I thank you because victory is ours in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you have led captivity captive and you have given gifts to all of us. Everyone here on this prayer altar, Father, all the families we represent, we receive gifts from the mighty. God, uh, so that we may dwell with the Yah, we may dwell with the Yahweh, the self existent God whom nobody created. Uh, we thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' name. Psalm 68, verse 19. The Bible says in that scripture, What a glorious God! He gives us salvation over and over and over. Child of God, every time we need to be rescued, He gives us salvation over and over and over. Then daily, he carries our burdens. And then he says, Selah, 
pours in his presence. What a glorious God. He gives salvation over and over. Then daily he carries our burdens. I want you to thank him. Mighty God, I just want to thank you. Selah. We pause and we contemplate this in your presence that you have given us salvation over and over and over and over. Lord, whatever we needed rescuing from in this season, you've rescued us again. Whatever it is that was a burden daily. You carry our burdens. You have carried our burdens. The burdens of everyone here. All the families we represent. Whatever is the burden. Whatever has been a challenge. Whatever has been a hindrance. Thank you, Lord, that you have carried our burdens. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Verse 20 of Psalm 68. Our God is a mighty God who saves us over and over. For the Lord Yahweh rescues us from the ways of death many times. But he will crush every enemy, shattering their strength. He will make heads roll, for they refuse to repent of their stubborn, sinful ways. Are you with me, child of God? Let's begin to thank him. Father God, mighty God, I thank you. You have saved us over and over. Yahweh, you have rescued us from the ways of death. Nobody here will die prematurely. No one will die prematurely. No one on this prayer platform will die before their time. We have been rescued in the name of Jesus. In verse 21, you said you will crush every enemy. You will crush, Lord. Whoever is the enemy, whatever is the enemy, whatever has been standing against your children, and thank you tonight they are crushed you have shattered the strength of the evil altars. Evil altars that were raised against us. Evil altars that were bearing our photographs, our images, bearing parts of our bodies, uh, points of contact. Uh, our evil altars are uh, bearing anything that belongs to us. Uh, photographs they've downloaded from social media. Father, tonight they are shattered and crushed uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, Lord, evil altars uh, where evil priests and priestesses uh, have been ministering evil to us. Uh, Father, tonight you will make heads roll. Where they've refuse to repent of their stubborn sinful ways. Uh, heads will roll. We are praying Lord uh, that all the human agents of the kingdom of darkness would repent. Uh, but whoever says over their dead body will they repent. Uh, so shall it be over them Lord. Their dead bodies will roll. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, he will make heads roll. Anyone who refuses to repent uh, of their stubborn sinful ways uh, because we will not be stopped. Uh, anyone who has swore who has swore by their life uh, that we will not be free. Anyone who swore by their life uh, that we will not enjoy peace. Uh, that our marriages will not be peaceful. That our children will not enjoy peace. Uh, that our children should be resisted and manipulated. Uh, we say, Lord, tonight, uh, if they refuse to repent, uh, let their heads roll. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father God, shatter their evil altars. Shatter their evil sacrifices. Let their evil sacrifices be silenced by the blood of Jesus. Scatter, Lord. Their evil plans. Their evil gatherings. In the name of Jesus. When we started the prayer, when we were worshipping children of God, the Lord showed me a vision. In this vision, I saw a long table. Of men sitting on that table. I said, Lord, who are these people? What are they sitting for? He said, that's the council of darkness. The council of darkness. They gather to issue evil verdicts over God's children. But let us pray tonight. If they refuse to repent of their stubborn sinful ways, their heads will roll. Anyone from the council of darkness who has made up their mind that you and I will not be free. Their heads will roll because we must be free. Jesus died for us to be free. Whom the son sets free is free in Indeed, uh, we cannot be limited anymore. Evil judgments and evil verdicts uh, released against us cannot stand uh, because the blood of Jesus vetoes them. The blood of Jesus vetoes them. We pray this morning uh, that the, the, the ordinances uh, and the handwritings uh, and the legal violations and the, uh, the, the trade agreements and the covenants uh, that were against us, which were enforced against us, uh, Jesus has taken them out of the way and nailed them to the cross. Uh, he has spoiled the principalities and the powers. Uh, he has spoiled the council of wickedness. Uh, every council of wickedness uh, that has gathered against us, uh, that are sitting by a boardroom to decide evil against us. Uh, scatter them, oh God, tonight. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. It will not stand. It will not stand. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. 
Karamasia. The Bible says in that Psalm 68, 21, God will crush every enemy, every enemy. The known ones, the unknown ones. There are some we don't know who are operating underground. God will crush every enemy. Every enemy. Enemies from the realm of the natural. Enemies from the realm of the spirit. Enemies in church. Enemies outside church. Enemies at work. Enemies outside work. Wherever there is an enemy, the Lord will shatter them. He will shatter their strength. He will make heads roll. Where they refuse to repent in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 68 from verse 22. I'm still in the Passion Translation. Bible says, I hear the Lord God saying to all the enemies of his people, you'd better come out of your hiding places. All of you who are doing your best to stay away far from me. Don't you know there is no place to hide for my people will be the conquerors. They will soon have you under their feet. They will crush you until nothing is left. Did you hear that child of God? Amen to the word of God. Because the Bible says all the promises of God are yes in Christ Jesus. And we say amen to what Jesus said yes to. He said uh, that all the enemies of his people must come out of their hiding places. Wherever they are hiding, they are coming out today. They are exposed. Uh, there's no place to hide. They cannot hide. Uh, they cannot hide uh, under the sea, under the ocean, under the river, under the caves. Uh, wherever they are not going to hide. Uh, under the, the earth, uh, in the regions of the dead, wherever they are hiding, come out, let the power of God judge your evil works, you will no longer be able to hide, in the name of Jesus, Bible says in verse 23 for my people will be the conquerors child of God, do you belong to God we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, begin to declare, I am a conqueror, I am a conqueror the word of God says I'm a conqueror God says I'm a conqueror, he says I have the enemy under my feet under my feet, Bible says in Luke 10 19, behold I give unto you power and authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, nothing shall by any means harm us to Tonight, Lord, uh, we have them under our feet. We trample them. We trample them. We crush them until nothing is left. Nothing must be left uh, of that evil altar. Nothing must be left uh, of that evil decree. Nothing must be left uh, of that evil agenda. Every agenda of wickedness. Uh, I say nothing must be left of it. Nothing must be left. Uh, nothing must be left. Uh, we are not leaving any residual prayer point. Uh, nothing must be left uh, from what the enemy started. Uh, it must must be destroyed tonight. Nothing must be left. Nothing must be left. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O God. We worship you. We honor you. The Bible says in Psalm 68 verse 34, give it up for God. Put your hands together for the Lord. For he alone has all the strength and power. Proclaim his majesty. For his glory shines down on his children. His mighty strength soars in the clouds of glory. God, we are full of awe tonight. We tremble before you as your glory streams from your holy place. The God of power shares his mighty strength with us, his children. God, we give our highest praise to you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Before we take our final prayer tonight, does anyone have anything to add, brethren? Ascribe to the Lord, all sons of the mighty. This is Psalm 29 from verse 1, Amplified Version. Ascribe to the Lord, all sons of the mighty. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty and the majesty of his holiness, for he is the creator and source of holiness. Now, from verse 3. I want us to personalize those verses and put them in our lives. For example, verse three now, it says the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. Waters 
prophetically represents populations, represents human populations. We want to say the voice of the Lord is upon the waters, is upon all the people around me, my family, everywhere. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over all the populations. Wherever we live, the God of glory is over there. And then you will say, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. And then you'll be like, the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. Cedar is a metaphor for strength, for something that is strong, that is hard to cut down. But the Bible says the voice of the Lord breaks the cedar in your life. What has been that stubborn problem? I want you to pray. As I'm praying, oh God, let the voice of the Lord be heard through my voice. And may you break the stubborn cedars. Any stubborn problem, anything that has lasted too long, it's been on the prayer list for too long. It has lasted too long. Break it, oh God. Are you with me, child of God? So you continue like that. When you get to verse six, you, you begin to speak. Let the voice of the Lord cause whatever nation you're connected to, to skip like a calf. Let the voice of the Lord wreck the flames of fire. Let the voice of the Lord shake the wilderness. Is there a wilderness in your life? No wilderness is a time of suffering, a time of affliction. Wilderness is a time where, you know, productivity is not there in the wilderness. You're going to say, let the voice of the Lord shake that wilderness, shake the wilderness, any wilderness in my life, because the wilderness must be Become a fruitful field. There must be there must be a highway in the wilderness. There must be rivers flowing in our desert. So you're going to be speaking. Let the voice of the Lord do it. In verse nine, it says, "The voice of the Lord makes the deer." the hinds to give birth. And so you're going to pray, Lord, whatever good thing I'm pregnant with right now, whatever I've been praying about, Lord, and it's here, Lord, uh, as, a, as, a, as a spiritual pregnancy, let me give birth to it. Let this testimony be given birth to Let the testimony become complete like that, like that. So child of God, go ahead, begin to personalize that psalm in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father God, I thank you for your voices upon the waters. Your voice is powerful. Your voice is upon every man, every woman, every child, every young person who has joined in this prayer this night. Uh, your voice, oh God, uh, God of glory, thunder around us. Uh, let your voice be heard. Uh, let them hear the thunderings of your voice uh, in the realm of the natural, in the realm of the spirit. Uh, wherever our names are mentioned, uh, God of glory begin to thunder. Whoever has become a hindrance in our presence, uh, whoever has become, oh God, uh, a mountain that refuses for us to move forward, uh, whoever is refusing to sign off what we need to be signed off, uh, Father God of glory, begin to thunder. Begin to thunder, Lord. Uh, whoever, Lord, Lord, uh, has become, oh God, uh, a source of hindrance, uh, a source of delay. Uh, I pray, oh God, uh, thunder, Lord, uh, thunder, God. Shanama kurraba sekelebo kurraba siya. Zumele gado siya ndarabo kurraba bababababa. Shantele brado sika ndarabo siya. Maseke tele gado sika la bababababa. Makura bababababa siya. Makura bababababa siya ndarabo siya. Makura baseke terebo siya. Ina masika ndarabo siya. Maseke terebo kurraba bababababa. Masuke leva zuva ka Zamaleke seke rabo sukalebo si andarabo kuranderebo mazeke levrado sokondorobo limbrado sokondorobo tanda Lord oh God arise oh God arise oh God arise in the name of Jesus let your voice be heard over many waters Father God in every realm in every dimension I am asking tonight let them hear your voice let them hear the thunder of your voice in the name of Jesus for your voice Lord is powerful your voice is full of majesty let your voice be heard through our voices. Every time we pray, every time we speak, may the kingdom of darkness hear your voice. May they hear your powerful voice. May your voice, Lord, break the cedars. Whatever is the stubborn problem, let it break to pieces tonight. In the name of Jesus, uh, every long-standing challenge, uh, every long-standing hindrance, uh, every long-standing thing, everything that is rejecting our, our promotion, rejecting the prophecy, rejecting our deliverance, rejecting our healing, rejecting our peace. Father, tonight, let your voice break it. In the name of Jesus, uh, make, oh God, uh, every land around us to begin to skip like a calf. Let there be changes. Uh, Lord, let your voice break Break flames of fire and lightning. Let them see the lightning of God uh, in all their evil gatherings. Lightning of God begin to strike. Uh, lightning of God begin to strike. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, let your voice shake every wilderness. Wherever there is affliction in our lives, uh, wherever, Lord, uh, there is a lack of productivity. For wilderness is a place where there is no increase, there is no productivity. Lord, shake the wilderness. Uh, shake it, Lord. Uh, shake every wilderness in our lives. Uh, may every wilderness tonight be transformed to a fruitful field. Uh, may we be 
be fruitful. May we be like that tree that has been planted by the rivers of living water. May our leaf never never lack being all God greener. In the name of Jesus, our leaf will not wither. We will always be fruitful in and out of season. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, may your voice cause us to give birth to every testimony that we have been pregnant with. Tonight, Lord, let there be divine delivery. In the name of Jesus, let that testimony be made manifest. In Jesus' name, Lord, thank you that you sit as king over the flood. You sit as king forever. Wherever the en enemy came in like a flood, you have raised the standard and you are sitting as king over our lives. Rule forevermore. Lord, thank you. And then finally, Psalm 29 verse 11, the Bible says the Lord will give unyielding and impenetrable strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Let's receive it and thank him as we close tonight. Lord, we thank you for unyielding and impenetrable strength uh, that you have given to us. Uh, thank you for blessing us with peace. Uh, even as we go into the night season, we are going with peace. Uh, there will be peace in our homes, peace in our dreams. Uh, the dreams we dream will be by revelation of the Holy Spirit. There will be no satanic invasions in our dream realm. There will be no satanic agents uh, manifesting or working in our dreams. Uh, instead, we speak peace. We speak peace over our brothers and sisters sisters in Christ, even those who are not able to join the prayer tonight, we are asking Lord, let the peace of God that transcends all understanding guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. All of us, oh God, may we live in undeniable peace and yielding impenetrable strength and peace. Bless us Lord, in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Thank you Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you Father.